Swifters, this is Prof G. Are you ready to be authorities on authentication? Well, in this lesson, we're going to learn to set up an authentication service in our Firebase app, and we'll write Swift UI code so that users can create an account with an email and password, and then use those credentials to log into our app anytime they want. Let the coding continue. So at the end of our last lesson, which was the first lesson in building the Snacktacular app, we set up our Xcode project, we used Swift Package Manager to install several Firebase and Cloud Firestore packages, and we set up our Firebase app in Google's Cloud. Now we're ready to work with authentication, and we'll do this over two lessons. In this first lesson, we'll get sign up and logging in working. Then in the next lesson, we'll refine the user interface by allowing the user to travel between email and password fields using the keyboard. We'll also provide some validation checks to the user interface, and provide some feedback if they get something wrong. When we're done, we'll have a set of code that you should be able to drop in to just about any new Swift UI Firebase app whenever you want to quickly set up sign up and login services. And while this will let us get up and running while we're learning new concepts, we'll be able to return to this code and add more features later. Our goal is to get some quick sign up and login code working so that we can get into the real action, which is saving and loading data in the cloud. So let's start in the Firebase console. This is where you set up your Snacktacular app in the browser during our last lesson. Make sure you're signed in and you're in your Snacktacular app since that's where we want to add authentication services and then just click on authentication. Then click on the get started button and we see a bunch of different login options available, but each one requires a different set of login code. They each have a separate API. So for now, we'll simply use the email and password. But again, we can add more login options in the future. Just know that the code we write here isn't drop in compatible with these other different types of login. Each one has their own special SDK. So click on email and password, then click enable email and password. And we're not going to offer passwordless sign in so we can leave that unchanged, then click save. Then let's head back to X code and we'll add login code. Now we're going to do that in our content view. So if you're not in your content view file, click that in your project navigator. Now first I'm going to change the name of content view to login view. So I'll right click on content view in the struct definition, select refactor rename, change the name to login view and press return. And technically you don't need to change the content view reference up here in your comment. That's not going to affect your code, but I like to change it anyway. Now, since we're going to be working with parts of the Firebase libraries, we need to import Firebase just below import Swift UI. And we'll keep the VStack in here, but I'll delete everything that's inside of this and I'll replace this with an image view. This will be the image view without any parameter labels, the one with a resource. And I'm going to pass in the string logo, that's lowercase l-o-g-o, and that's an image that we installed in our asset catalog in our last lesson. And then below this, we'll add modifiers for dot resizable, dot scale to fit, and now I'm going to add fields to enter email and password. And since there are going to be some modifiers that are common between these two, I'm going to put them inside of a group and add the modifiers below the group. So I'll say group, open and close curlies. And we're going to want to create state variables to get the user entered information. So up top, I'll say at state private var email equals empty string and at state private var password equals empty string. Then back inside our group, why don't we add our text field? We'll select our option with title and text. And for title, I'll enter the string email. And the text needs to be a binding value. This will be dollar sign email, which is a state variable we just created. But for our password, we're not going to enter a text field here. Instead, we're going to use something new. Enter secure field. And highlight this option with title and text, just like the text field had. But in a secure field, you can't see the letters as they're typed. And there's some other things that make this field more secure, like it disables copy and paste so that you can't copy the password that's entered here. So press return to accept this. For our title string, we'll enter password, which will be grayed out inside the prompt, just like it is with text field. And for the text that needs to be a binding value, we'll say dollar sign password. That's the other state variable we created above. Now below the group, let's add some modifiers to apply to both of these fields. We can add dot text field style. This will also apply to the secure field and we'll pass in dot rounded border. And I always think that the rounded border is too faint. I like a darker border and we learned how to do this in an earlier lesson. Enter dot overlay and select the option with just content. That'll give us open and close curlies when we press return. And passing in rounded rectangle, that's with a capital R because this is a view, not a modifier. Select the corner radius option, we'll pass in five. Then below the rounded rectangle, let's add a dot stroke modifier. Select the option with content and line width. The content should be dot gray. Tab over to line width, that'll be two. And I think this is gray is still a little too dark, but we can tone it down. So right after dot gray in between the parens, we'll add dot opacity. Passing in 0.5, that'll give us 50% transparency. And I think that looks good. Now let's add sign up and login buttons side by side in an H stack. So we'll add an H stack with open and close curlies. And then I'll add a button. I'll select the option with action and label. I'll select the option with title key and action. I'll pass in the string log in. And for action, I'll press return for the trailing closure and put in a placeholder comment. 
Then I'll copy all this button code, paste it after the H stack, and change the topmost button so that it says sign up instead of log in. Then below the H stack, I'll add a button style modifier passing in dot border prominent. And this is the default accent color. For me, this is blue, but let's set up a custom color. I think it'd be nice to have a custom color that matches the orangish color in the Snacktacular logo. So why don't we head over to our asset catalog in our project navigator. Then click plus in the lower left to add a new asset and select color set. You'll be allowed to name the color set. Let's call this snack color, upper camel case, press return. Then I'll click the first color box, open up the inspector's pane, and under the appearances, select none. This will give us just a single color to work with, which is what we want. Then click the show color panel in the lower right, and in the color panel, click the eyedropper tool, and then move the eyedropper over the darkest part of the orange on the Snacktacular logo up here. You'll have to position yourself very precisely, but once you've got the dropper over that color, click there, and that'll add a color Color to the snack color. That's it. We've now got a custom color named snack color, so we can return to login view and use this. So now we can add a dot tint modifier. And if I type in dot snack for my color, Xcode will put in dot snack here. I'm not sure why it's not snack color or why the color isn't showing up here, but if I press return to accept snack, in a moment we'll see the buttons tint with our custom snack color. Nice! Then I'll set a dot font modifier to dot title two, and I can add a little bit more padding to the top by saying dot padding dot top. And I'll add some padding between these buttons by after the first button adding dot padding dot trailing, and after the second button adding dot padding dot leading. And I think that's nicely spaced out. And so now we need to add some functions which are gonna act as the actions for these two buttons. So first let's add our sign up function just before the closing curly in our struct, we'll add func, we'll call this register, open and close parens, open and close curlies, and then we'll write some code to authenticate our user. And here's how we do it. Type in capital A auth, that's A-U-T-H, and auth is a class that's used in Firebase authentication, but I'm not seeing it in code completion. So when stuff doesn't show up in code completion, ah, that probably means that I need to import something, and if you guessed that, you would be correct. So let's head up to the top of our code and enter import Firebase auth. This can be tricky because code completion shows Firebase authorization. That's not what we want. We want Firebase auth, A-U-T-H for authentication. But now that we've got this in here, if we head back down to our new register function and backspace over and retype auth, we see, ah, now this is recognized. So select auth, press return. Then we want dot lowercase auth. This is a static method for the auth class. So make sure we've got open and close parens after this. Dot lowercase auth and then dot create user. Select this option with the email, password, and completion handler, and we want the completion handler, so hold down the option key as we press return. All three of those parameters will be entered, and this is how we create a new user. Now for the with email parameter, we'll just pass in our email variable. For our password parameter, that'll be our password variable. Press return on the completion handler, and it will pass in two values for us. A result, why don't we call that lowercase result, and an optional error value, why don't we call that lowercase error. Then we'll first check to see if we have an error. So if we say if let error equals error, open and close curlies. This happens if we get an error, meaning the error is non-nil. And for now, we'll just print out in double quotes, login error, colon, string interp, error dot localized description. And I always like to put an angry emoji in front of my errors. And you know what? I'd also like to show an alert if we get this error. And here's how we set up our alert. First, we want to create a bool value that's going to tell us whether or not the alert is showing. So we'll say at state private var showing alert. We'll initially set this equal to false. And I'm also going to create a variable to hold our alert message. So I'll say at state private var alert message equals, and initially this is going to be the empty string. Then down in our register function, in the if clause, if we have an error, I'll say alert message equals, and in between the double quotes, I'm just going to copy and paste my error login code with the localized description, and that'll be the message that shows up if the user gets a sign in error. Then after this, to show the alert, I'm going to set showing alert equal to true, but we haven't set up our alert yet, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll enter that below the V stack, so below this dot padding here is below the V stack. Start typing in dot alert and select the option that has the title key is presented and actions. Now notice what code completion says down here. It says it presents an alert when a given condition is true using a localized string for the title. So that title is going to be our alert message, and the is presented binding boolean value is going to be our showing alert value. In this selection, none of these are italicized or grayed out, so all three of them will be selected when I press return. So title key is alert message, and the binding variable for is presented is going to be dollar sign showing alert. When this is set to true, that means our alert is going to show. 
Then tab over to Actions, press Return for Trail Enclosure Format, and inside the curlies, we're just going to put a button. Now when we select the button, choose the option with the title key, Roll and Action. Now the title key is going to be the string OK, that's just going to be the label for the button. Then tab over to the Roll, and in here we'll say Dot Cancel, so that's just going to cancel the alert when the user clicks on this button. And then for the action, actually we don't even need an action, so what we can do is we can finish this off with a closing paren and just have empty curlies after the cancel. Then back down in our register function, let's put an else clause after the if let. And let's create a simple print statement just to indicate that our sign up worked properly. So we'll say print in between parens and double quotes. I'm going to add a cool emoji because I think it's cool that somebody just signed up. And I'll follow this with registration success. And below this, I'm going to put a to do comment that just says load list view because if the user signed in, we want to go to the list view so they can start using the app. And we haven't created the list view yet, but we will. Then as the button action for the sign up button, we need to call that register function that we just wrote. So now let's try this out. I'm going to click on the play button and run in the simulator. Then I'm going to head to the browser and take a look at the Firebase console. And in the authentication area, click on the users tab. And currently we don't see any users in here, but we're about to sign up our first user and they'll eventually show up here. But first let's head over to our app and our interface isn't completely built out yet, but let's try this. And remember, if your keyboard isn't showing in the simulator, press Command K. We'll enter an email address and ah, I'm seeing a few things that we're gonna wanna change. See how the text field capitalizes the first letter by default? We don't want that in email addresses. Those are always lowercase. They're actually case insensitive, but the standard is to write them without capital letters. Look what happens when I type my first name. Autocorrect capitalizes this even if I don't press the caps key. And also, iOS has a special keyboard that I'll show you. We can specify to show a special email keyboard that has symbols like the at symbol on the same screen as the letter. It just makes it easier for the user to type in their email address. So let me show you how we can fix this with modifiers to our text field view. Head back over to Xcode and scroll up to find the text field view. So under text field, first we'll add dot keyboard type and we'll pass in dot email address. This will give us that special email address keyboard. And then we'll also add dot autocorrect disabled to disable the autocorrection. And we'll enter dot text input auto capitalization, passing in dot never, so that things entered in the email field will never be auto capitalized. And for the password in our secure field, we don't want the email keyboard for this. And auto correction is actually disabled in the secure field by default. You might be wondering, hey, should I put in text input auto capitalization never? in here. Nope, secure field gives you that by default. But I'm also going to modify the keyboard for the secure field. I'm going to enter a dot submit label modifier and pass in the value dot done. Now this is going to change the return button on the keyboard so that it shows up with the done label and we'll customize how this works in a subsequent lesson. But at least for now, we'll set this up so that it says done. And as for the text field, we're also going to add a dot submit label modifier up here, but here we're going to pass in dot next. Now we'll eventually write some code so that when you press dot next, it will automatically move the cursor from the email field to the password field, which is almost always what the user wants to do. So now let's build and run and I'll click in the email field. And again, if your keyboard doesn't pop up, press command K and will you look at this? We see the special email keyboard with the at symbol next to the space bar. And as I start to enter my name, it's not auto capitalized, which is great. It's also not auto corrected, which is what I want. So I'm going to enter my email address. I ask that you kindly don't spam me and please don't email me asking me to debug your code. Now also notice that the button in the lower right says next. This is what happens when we change the submit label. That's what we wanted. But when we tap it, it doesn't move us to the next field. Again, we're going to write code to do that in the next lesson but we can click on the password field. Notice as we start to type, you can't see the letters, which is what we want. Very cool. That's because we're using a secure field here. Also notice that the return button now says done. That's what we did with our submit label modifier for our secure field. And I'm gonna deliberately try to create an account with a four character password. Then I'll click sign up and ho! Oh, the alert pops up. It says login error. Password must be six characters long or more. So our alert is working. And the text that we're seeing in here is the error.localized description. Nice. So I'm going to enter a longer password, then click sign up. Now, after I click sign up, I can see my cool emoji with registration success in my console. That message should indicate that we've signed up a new user. But to check, let's head back over to our browser and take a look at our Firebase console. Now, this doesn't refresh automatically, so I don't see the user that I just created. But what happens if I click sign up again? Then I get another sign in error, but this is a different one. It states that the email address is already in use by another account. So it must have created the user the first time. 
and click OK. But I'm going to click in the browser in the back. And over here on the right, I'll click the circular refresh icon. And ho oh, oh, will you look at that? The first user is signed up in our system. Nice. We see their email address here. We see the date they signed in. Looking good. Now, there are no more email checks as part of sign up, so I can enter another bogus user. How about a at bc.edu? This isn't a valid email address. I'll click sign up. We'll eventually want to use the focus property that we learned about in earlier apps to dismiss the keyboard. We haven't done that yet. And again, normally we would head to a different view in our app, but we haven't coded that yet. But if we head back to our browser and refresh our users view, we can see our second user is created as well. So sign up is working great. Congratulations. And by the way, if you wanted to work with a user's account, you could hover your cursor over to the far right of the account. You'll see three vertical dots show up. Coding hipsters sometimes call that the vertical kebab. And if you click that, you'll get options to reset password, disable account, or delete account. So this is looking good. Now let's head back to Xcode and we'll write a login function. I'll make a few adjustments and then I'll scroll down below. Now we'll do that right after our register function with func login, open and close parens, and open and close curlies. And we'll start this the same way as our create user method above with capital A auth dot lowercase a auth with parens ends, then we'll enter dot sign in. Now it might take a while to find this, but you want the option with with email, password, and completion. And completion is in italics, so we'll hold down the option key when we press return just to make sure that all three of these parameters are entered. So our email should be email, our password should be password, those are two variables we created, and press return on the completion handler for our trail enclosure format. And again, here we enter two values, and again I'm going to use result for the first one and error for the second one. And as for the code that I want in here, I'm actually just going to highlight this if else clause from above, copy it, and paste it below. And ooh, I'm noticing down here that it's correct when it says login error, but above I should change this to, how about sign in error? And actually to distinguish my messages in this second error message down here, I'm going to change the cool emoji before the login error to a log emoji. You might not have even known that there was a log emoji, but there is. And now in the button action for the login button, I'm going to call the login function. I'm going to build and run. And if I log in with one of the users that I just created using the correct password, I see the keyboard jump from email to regular keyboard. Look down in the console. I see my log emoji and it shouldn't say registration success. That's another thing that I need to change in the login function in the else condition. I'll change the print so that it says a login success. But now if I refresh the authentication panel in the browser, I actually don't see any changes here and I don't expect to see any, but there is a sign in column in here with the last date signed in. So tomorrow if I sign in, I'll actually see the updated sign in for the user that signs in one day later. And you can try to purposely generate some other errors in here. So if you enter an invalid email address and click login, you see the auto generated login error, the supplied auth credential is malformed or has expired. That means that the email address is not valid. And we'll head back to Xcode and we'll correct those errors that we noticed. So let's see. And why don't we change our error in the registration function? So instead of sign in error, why don't we call this sign up error? I think that's more accurate. And with that, Swifter, you've got registration and login working with Firebase authentication. So now we'll refine this in the next two lessons. First, so that we can move our email field to the password field just by using our keyboard and pressing done on the keyboard in the password field will dismiss the keyboard. And then after that, we'll add some programmatic navigation. So if we log in or sign up successfully, we'll navigate to a new list view that we haven't created yet. But feel good about those amazing authentication skills you've acquired, you fabulous Firebase programmer. Keep hacking.